Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to discuss limits. When we are working with limits, what limits means is that as the x is moving to a certain number, so as the x as the x is moving to a certain number, then the f of x also tends to be moving to a certain number. So what they mean is, if f is a function, which is defined, so in other words, f is a function, as x tends to go to a certain number, let, let's say it's tending to go to 1, then from the left and right, x tends to be 1, then the graph tends to be a certain number. Now, why are we doing limits? Because limits restricts graphs. Let's take the following example. As x tends to be moving towards 3, what would this function move to? So if we substitute the 3 in the x, you would get 12. But for examination purposes, you're not allowed to substitute. The reason for that is because they're telling you x is moving towards 3. They're not telling you that x is equal to 3. So what we should have done was limit x tends to be 3, x plus 9, and then in our heads mentally we substitute the 3 in it and we know that you know what, as x tends to be 3, we know that the f of x is going to move towards 12. Did you see I skipped the step in between. Now when we're doing limits, there's a few rules. The whole aim is that it must never be undefined. Right, which means if I had a sum like x plus 4 over x plus 2, but we had a limit, x tends to be minus 2. In limits, our aim is that once we substitute, the equation must never be undefined. If I have to substitute minus 2 into x, then I would have minus 2 plus 2 giving me a denominator of 0 and that would immediately make my equation undefined. So when you are working with limits, what you're going to do is you're going to see if you substitute and by substituting you simply get an answer, then you can continue. Now, when you see that if you substitute it's undefined, you're going to stop. What you're going to do is number one, you're going to factorize. Number two, you're going to try and cancel. And once you do that, you will see that once you substitute, it is no longer undefined. Let's do the following example. Okay, if I substitute 1 into x, immediately it's going to make my equation undefined. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and factorize Number one, we are going to factorize. Now the top expression can be factorized into x plus 2, x minus 1, all over x minus 1. We have a limit, x tends to be 1. Once you factorize, try and cancel wherever possible. Now the x minus 1 would cancel with the denominator x minus 1 leaving us with the limit x tends to be 1, x plus 2. Now if you substitute, you will not get an undefined answer. So we substitute 1 into x and it gives us an answer of 3. But remember, you're not allowed to show the substitution because x is not equal to 1, it tends to be moving to 1. So don't show that step even though you know you have to do that step. Right, so we basically calculated by means of substitution, but we're simply going to use our calculator. We're not going to show that step. Let's try another one. If you've got x cubed plus 1 
all over x plus 1 and our limit x tends to be negative 1. Now in our previous video we had showed you how to factorize cube functions. If we continue to factorize x cubed plus 1 we would have x plus 1 x squared minus x plus 1 all over x plus 1. Limit x tends to be negative 1. We can then cancel and we left with the limit x tends to be negative 1 x squared minus x plus 1. Now if you substitute the negative 1 you will not get an undefined answer. Our final answer would be 3. Again you will see I did not do this. That you can simply press into your calculator and you can get an answer but you do not write the step down because x is not equal to minus 1 it is tending to move towards minus 1. Thank you for watching.